when he first came on the scene, 2019, I think we all, we all at the same time collectively breathe a sign of relief because there's another billionaire to compete against Vince McMahon. And I think in the shadow of Vince, he came across as a savior. He came across as a beacon of hope. This old man who was clearly out of touch was running the company into the ground. And even though Triple H was a much better replacement, he never got the respect that he honestly deserved. And wasn't going to get it. He wasn't going to get it. That was until Vince got kicked out and Triple H took over as head of creative. And ever since then, despite Vince coming back and then being kicked out again, let's hope it stays permanent this time, WWE's business has seen nothing but growth. More and more growth over time. And AEW has kind of fallen off. And here we are, a year in. And AEW, despite having some successful moments, not going to forget about All In. All In holds the record for the most paid tickets for any wrestling promotion. Well, I'm not going to change that. I was going to preface it or put an asterisk next to it saying outside of Collision in Korea, but those people didn't pay for anything. They were forced to show up at that event. All In holds the record for the most paid tickets of any wrestling event ever. Ever. So, that's a big, big deal. However, when you look at the tickets being sold here in the States, when you look at the overall level of interest for All Elite Wrestling following All In, it hasn't been all that great. You can put the blame on CM Punk getting into a fight with Jack Perry and getting fired. Or a multitude of reasons. The fact that WWE is just kicking their ass. Whatever the hell the reason is, AEW has not followed up on the momentum given to them, brought upon them by this big event called All In. And you have to look at the top when it comes to that. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who is on your roster. You could have the greatest of all time. Some of the wrestlers in AEW are the greatest of all time. Chris Jericho, Adam Copeland, Christian, Brian Danielson, just to name a few. If the show has no interest, if it has no bite, people aren't going to pay tickets, people aren't going to show up. And attendances, attendances following all in have been abysmal. And so people like me are wondering, okay, what is the deal? Wrestle Dream was a great show. All In was one of the greatest shows of all time. All Out was a fantastic show. The quality of your pay-per-views and the weekly television should be selling this shit out like it's nothing. AEW should be rivaling WWE in terms of attendances, but it's not. Why? It ain't because of the talent. What is happening here? And so, when Tony Khan does these interviews, he should be ready for people to ask him these hard questions. Not just about CM Punk, but about, but about the quality of their product. And if Tony is not willing to tackle those questions head on, someone needs to tell him, don't do the interview. Just like someone should have told him not to tweet when he's angry that his show lost in the ratings. But that didn't happen. He needs a confidant. He needs someone to tell him, my boy, Tony, if you're not going to be straightforward about this, don't do the interview. Just don't do it. But if you're going to do it, answer the questions straight. Because you don't do the non-answer kind of corporate speak very well. You just don't. Paul Heyman is a master at giving non-answers to questions and it's still being interesting. Triple H is a master at giving non-answers to a question and it's still being interesting. Vince, Vince McMahon used to be good at it, not anymore, but he's also someone that's done it for a long time. Tony sucks at it. He just sucks. 
it comes across fake and disingenuous when someone asks him about, hey, Tony, your shows aren't doing very well. What do you think the problem is? And he's like, well, I think the shows are great. Hey, Tony, um, you're not looking very good in the fans' eyes. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think the fans are very passionate, and I think they should watch Dynamite tonight. It sounds disconnected, and it makes people not like you, which in turn makes them not like AEW. And then when you get to a point, Tony Khan, where fans start to hate the product because of you, and you become the problem, and you're the boss? That's a whole new bag of issues. So, I do want to take a look at this interview from, once again, most likely saying his name wrong, and I'm sorry, but the Dan Lombard, the Dan Lombard, 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 if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize. We're going to play audio from this interview. I'm going to stop and play it. You can listen to it for yourself with the link down below. But I want you guys to hear how Tony Khan responds to these questions. Because I want you to see this from my standpoint. I don't want to hate Tony Khan. I want him to be as successful, not just because I want AEW to kick WWE's ass. No, this is almost a necessary aspect of the wrestling business that just needs to be there. We need a competing company to rival WWE at their level. Otherwise, the business is just not going to be all that fun. So I need Tony Khan. I don't just want Tony Khan to be successful. I need him to be successful. AEW needs to be successful. They need to rival WWE. I just feel like he doesn't know that he gets in his own way. And, and see, when everyone else is seeing that, and it's not just people like me who watch it all the goddamn time, but, you know, people who don't even watch wrestling as regularly. And then they start asking him those questions, and then he knows sells it. It's not a good look. But we're going to play some of the interview here. Once again, you can listen to it for yourself. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is Dan LeBetard interviewing AEW owner Tony Khan. I'm most curious as you head into this evening, because you're not someone who's ever afraid to uh, tell us what he thinks. Uh, did you expect, when you took on the responsibility of this job, did you foresee the unpleasantness of, I'm going to be drowning in death threats one day because of the decisions I have made? Is that something that you expected? Not really, but I think it's great. Uh, really, to be honest, great. I think... The, the, yeah, the rancor of sports fans is across all sports. And it's something I've seen in football in the NFL. You see it in football in the Premier League. And for us, it's a great thing that we have passionate fans that really care about AEW, that really get excited about the shows. I love it. And our fans are really supportive. We're on our best run of major events we've ever done. You know, recently we set the all-time record the world record for ticket sales for any wrestling event ever. We've done all kinds of unprecedented things since we started this business. And might I add, the first ever AEW TV contract I ever signed, I actually did it in your old office at the Clevelander after you had me on the show. So we go way back and your show has been a great home to me for many, many years. Tony, you mentioned uh, threats from fans and you also mentioned the, the great show at Wembley that I was at in attendance for uh, I do agree that you've had a, a really great run okay. lately but there have been those in the media Dave Meltzer recently said AEW is running cold I know that uh, attendance is now all of a sudden fodder for memes you've brought in Adam Copeland from WWE there is a sense that with Jade going to WWE there's a lot of positive momentum there uh, how can you change perception right now Excellent question. An excellent question that is almost impossible to screw up as long as you tackle it head on. This is an easy one-up for Tony Khan. All he needs to say 
is that we're just going to go to work. We're going to put our head down. We're going to continue to produce the best shows possible. Wrestling has ebbs and flows. There are times where AEW is going to be down and the WWE is going to be great. But guess what? AEW will be up again. We will be popular again because WWE will cool off. And when they cool off, we will be right there to catch the wave and be awesome again. Because we ain't going nowhere. It's an easy question to answer. How do you think Tony Khan responded to this question? I'll give you two hints. He promoted AEW and ignored the question. Or he promoted AEW and ignored the question. Let's see which one he goes with. Well, I think I, we've really begun to change it. I think the perception is very strong for AEW worldwide. Like I said, we're 44 days ago, we set the all-time record for ticket sales for any wrestling show ever <laughs> in the planet. So we're having a very good year. Our pay-per-view numbers are through the roof. Oh, my and God. And we're going to have a great show tonight on TBS. I think the fans are really behind what we're doing. People really are mobilized behind this lineup. And I have to say, I've seen more positive momentum, more positive feedback about AEW in the last 24 hours than I had in several weeks. And that's saying a lot because we've had a lot of huge shows in the last several weeks. There's a lot of things that uh, have come across your way that maybe you weren't fully prepared for when you went down this venture, the managing of people and personality dynamics. At that show, you guys managed to put on the biggest show in wrestling history at Wembley Stadium, but you were dealing with a nightmare scenario backstage as one of your performers got into a fight with another one of your performers. Uh -oh. You've come out and publicly said something happened back there where you feared for your life, and this is all surrounding Phil Knight, a.k.a. CM Punk, who's now no longer with the company. I know that there's a lot of specifics that maybe you can't get into. No, get into the specifics. <laughs> I want to talk about the managing that scenario. It flashing before your eyes, oh my God, this is happening right now, and having to put on a show as one of your top performers, top build performers, a star that was on all the marquees, has lunged towards you in a threatening manner. Man, I feel so bad because this interviewer is great at his job. He is not afraid to ask Tony the questions that everyone has on their minds. I'm I'm gonna play the rest of the interview, by the way, because I want you to see how bad Tony looks. And again, I'm not trying to make him look bad. He just looks bad. Now the CM Punk question. I don't I don't expect Tony to feel comfortable asking or even answering these questions. That one he probably could have told them beforehand, look, no CM Punk questions, please. Let's, let's not talk about that. But apparently he didn't. And if he's going to be an open book about it, he needs to tackle it head on. Again, I'm not Tony Khan, but like, what else should I say? If, if I was asked this question and I was in charge of AEW, I would keep it short and simple. I would say, look, we loved and enjoyed every second working with Philip Brooks, not Philip Knight or Phil Knight, whatever the hell he said. Uh, CM Punk was a very, very integral part of AEW's growth. It sucks that we can't work with him. It's sad that I had to release him, but we were, or I was put in a situation where I had no choice, or I felt like I had no choice. He really made the company look bad following what was easily the best event ever ever in the history of AEW. People weren't talking about that. They were talking about him having a fight with Jack Perry. I can't have that. I cannot have that. And this is this is more than once he's done that. And I love Phil, but I, I cannot have him in the company. So it was either I fire him or I let him stay and whatever toxicity he brings along with him, I have to deal with and I don't want to deal with that. It's not really... That hard to say. I I really, really wish Tony would just come out and just say, like, dude, I had no choice. I didn't want to do it, but I had no choice. You're not gonna you're not gonna believe how he answers this question now. You're you're gonna be shocked. I'll give you two hits. I'm joking. Let's listen to how, how he responds. 
Well, I don't really want to talk about it, but I will say that I was really glad that the event came out as one of the best oh shows I've ever seen God. in pro wrestling. It was Eric, over 81,000 tickets sold, 81,035 tickets on. exactly. And the crowd was amazing, the show was amazing, and the wrestling was amazing. Everybody who wrestled on the show from start to finish did a great job. The fans were behind it. It was one of the biggest pay-per-views we've ever done, and we set okay. huge uh, milestones really that this company is all about that really when AEW began, it began as a love letter to pro wrestling for the fans. We had never gone to Europe and done a show. We debuted there with one of the biggest wrestling events in the history of the world. And yes, it was a challenging day backstage uh, without getting into the specifics. It was a hard day, but when the show was over, I think we were all really proud and everybody held their head high that, this is one of the best wrestling shows anybody's ever done, and AEW, we're the ones that did it. It's a big deal, and now we have this show tonight. Uh, the whole company's really rallying around oh the people wrestling on tonight's show. I think tonight on TBS, you're going to see AEW at our very, very best. And yes, I am glad that you enjoyed the show. I thought it was a great show, but you're right. It was a hard day. It was hard to get to that point, and thankfully, it came out as a great show. I'm going to... Does he honestly believe this makes him look good? I, I, I have to imagine someone is telling Tony behind scenes, bro, these non-answering questions and these interviews do not make us look good. I owe Ari Emanuel an apology. Because I remember when Ari first interviewed Tony Khan and he asked him about Cody Rose and CM Punk and all that kind of stuff. And Tony did exactly this. And I gave Ari a hard time saying, man, why would you ask him that during a very personal time with him? Of course, he's not going to answer that right now. You don't know the details. We don't know the details. But now that he's still doing it, it makes me go back on that situation and go, well, he probably could have answered the question. No, you just are not very good at giving non-answers to these questions that you don't want to answer. And so... What ends up happening is that now people start thinking, this guy has no idea what he's doing. Does this guy even know how this wrestling thing works? You're, you're over here telling us the show is great. It's one of the greatest shows of all time. But you're doing it as a defense mechanism to not answer a question, which then makes you saying that statement worthless. So next time you say a show is great, I'm not going to take it as seriously because you're not just saying it just to, you know, you're not saying it because you honestly believe it. You're saying it as a defense mechanism. It's like you just say it, you regurgitate it. It doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel right. And I get that he's the owner of the company. He has to promote it. He has to say it because that's his job. But don't make it feel like that you're saying it because it's your job. We should feel like you're saying it because it's true. This takes away from you being able to say the show is great when you say it as a defense mechanism. He asked you about CM Punk. You could have just simply said, look, thank you for asking the question, but I do not feel like, talk I do not feel like talking about it. I don't feel comfortable talking about it. It would have been an asshole thing to do, but you, you could have at least gotten off with that. But you doing the whole promotion thing and... It actually doesn't make you look good. It looks bad. Oh, we're not done yet. If you think we're done, strap in. Let's continue. Uh, tag in Dan real quick so he can actually get like the real news making answer after I apologize for making <laughs> CM Punk the inventor of Nike. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fine. A, yeah. a punk move by Tony. He <laughs> asked you a question and you've been at the fight game a long time. A total non-answer at the beginning and then just unrelenting promotion because you're a dirty fight game promoter and you didn't come You know close. there's a lot there's people doing a lot worse stuff in the fight game than You're right Tony. You, no. I got to say like, it's, it's a book. Stuff, it's a book. Look. It is I mean, it's so obvious it was a non-answer. It, it wasn't even a funny non-answer. Again, when you have someone like a Paul Heyman or a Vince McMahon, Triple H, even Stephanie McMahon is really good at non-answers. Who could at least, if not answer the question, bring something interesting to the floor to talk about that is newsworthy? You get me? If you're not going to answer the question, 
then at least bring something to the floor that's interesting. And I'm happy, again, this interviewer is awesome. I love this interviewer, or the interviewer, excuse me. What is his name again? Dan Lebatard? Lebatard? Great job. And apparently he works for ESPN. You know what? I should have known better. You should have, you should be good at your job. If you're working for ESPN, you should be good. But yeah, he called him out for it. A complete non-answer. Nah, answer the question. Answer the question, Tony. The owner, the head of the second biggest promotion in the world. And this is, this is the image you want to create? Nah, face that shit head on. Face that shit head on, Tony. You want to ask me about CM Punk? Yeah, I fired his ass. He shouldn't be acting like a dumbass. Fighting people backstage. Come on, Tony. I don't think CM Punk is a dumbass, by the way. I'm just saying, you fired him. He gave you a reason to fire him. That's your stance. Take that stance. Don't back off. Let's continue. No, that was, it's bull. It, there, something happened. I want to know what happened back there. What happened back what there? What happened? Don't tell. Don't, don't give Did us. Bill I, Brooks I, attack I, you. I can't talk about it. What is that? You're. I came on. You came on, and I'm like, this guy always answers the questions. You honestly. said you feared for your life. You promoted How? this thing a couple of different times. All right, you got your promotion on. It's tonight. You got a rating. I'm glued floor. to Title Two. Give me some. <laughs> They're over it. They're over it, man. I was over it after the first one. They are just like nah. If you are going to be here, you better answer these goddamn questions or stop wasting our time. This is our time that we're giving to you to help people understand you, to get people to invest in you and your product. And this is, this is how you choose to look? This looks bad. There's no disputing it. It looks bad. It just does. Let, let's see. Let's see how he responds. I'm going to be honest with you. I did listen to a part of the interview, basically all the way up into the CM Punk stuff. This part is new territory. I haven't heard this part of the interview yet, so we're going to be reacting to it together. Some of the good shit. Did he throw a punch at what you? What happened back there? I have not really gone out and discussed that publicly beyond what I said in Chicago, I had to make a really hard decision after what happened, and I really appreciate all the fans standing by us and supporting AEW oh for my this. And God. we're having uh, a huge show tonight. Oh my and, like God! Said, I'm promoting tonight's show, but I also Tony am not saying anything. <laughs> oh my that I God! <laughs> you can't make this up. You can't. You can't make this up. Guy is frustrating. And if I'm a wrestler in AEW, I, I, I have my head in my hand right now. Like, my dude, my dude, you, you already look bad because of what happened on social media. Now, you want to add this on top of it? Come on. Come on, Tony. Come on. Do better, Tony. And these guys, I love these interviewers. They are not letting him go. They are trying to squeeze. Squeeze squeeze whatever they can out of this guy. We got a lot more to go. I'm happy they're not letting up, though. This is great. Let's keep going. But, Tony, if, if, you, if he talks about Dynamite one more goddamn time, I swear, we got it. We got it. Been said before. Well, that's, Why not? I, that's useless. But we're special. We Say it to us. Whisper it to us. Tony, you. stay strong. Did we he need, punch you with guys, the left or right hand? Did he make contact? You haven't said before. <laughs> Did you need an ice pack? Do you not understand how promotion works? Something, we don't want the same things you've said before. We want a little bit extra. Just give us a little something. Okay. Who wins okay. tonight? Well, that's a good question. About Damn it, Billy. He was getting so. there. See, I really appreciate you giving me that out. Uh, Damn it, Tony, Billy, you. He said okay. Come on. Left or right hand? What did he punch you with? Guys, what happened back there was a really hard day for a lot of people. And I don't want to make light of it because it was a really challenging circumstance. It was one of the most incredible things I've been through in wrestling. It was a really hard day at the office uh, for a lot of people. And the amazing thing is that we still came through and put a great show out. 
under what were really challenging circumstances. And for the fans there, including you, Mike, because there's people that traveled from all over the world to come see this show, it was really important to every single person, everybody back there, to get it together and have our best show. And we did it. You know what I like to do after a hard day at work? Sometimes I like to talk about it. Yeah, talk just it air out, it out, yeah. relive some of the events, right. maybe talk go blow by blow. And, and I'm done. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, y'all, y'all can listen to the rest of it. What, what, what in the actual hell, Tony? Tony, stop doing these interviews. If you are not gonna come forth with legit answers and answer them straight, or at the very least, get good at non-answering, stop doing interviews. This looks bad. I'm sorry. You are the head of the second biggest wrestling promotion in the world, and you can't even just answer the hard question. Look. These questions they're asking you are very relevant questions. Number one, your show attendance centers are low. What do you plan on doing to make them higher? That is a legit question. I want to know the answer to that because I'm going to be live at one of those shows. I don't want to be staring at one half empty and the other half full. I want to know how you're going to make these shows more interesting so fans like me can be excited to come to your shows. That's a legit question. The CM Punk stuff, whatever. Answer it, don't answer it. But don't, don't do the non-answer crap. Don't just keep promoting the same shit. At least promote different shit. There are different ways to do non-answers. God. I, I cannot make this up. It is a horrible look. I'm sorry. And people are going to say I'm a WWE lover or an AEW hater. I've proven multiple times here that I have probably supported AEW more than WWE. For, for years, for years, right? But I try to be fair. I love wrestling. Good, great, awesome wrestling. That's what I want. And if WWE is giving it to me more than AEW, of course I'm going to support WWE. Vice versa, if WWE is not giving it to me and AEW is giving it to me, I'm going to support AEW. If they're both giving it to me, I support both. If neither one is giving it to me, I'm going to support someone else. I care about good wrestling. I care about good products. I need AEW to be at its best. And if Tony Khan is hindering in that, in whatever way, shape, or form, he needs to be called out for it. You are the boss. You are the head honcho. If you don't know what to do in these situations, when it comes to these interviews, you don't have to do them. You don't have to come on and give these non-answers and do all the promotion. And then use the promotion as a defense mechanism to not answer the question. And it's so obvious. It's almost a parody at this point. And what happens is when you do that, Tony, it doesn't help your show. It actually hurts your show. Because now fans are not going to want to watch Dynamite. Because it doesn't feel like you're saying that to help promote the show. You're saying that, Tony, as a defense mechanism. Which makes me think you don't really think the show's all that good. Now I start the question, do you think the show is good? Is the show even good? Now I know the show is good, and I'm excited to go to Dynamite tomorrow night, but my dude, you gotta be a leader. You are the main focus. Doesn't matter what big star, what big star you have in your company, whether it's CM Punk, Kenny Omega, doesn't matter who it is. The face can be whoever the hell you want it to be. You are the first people, the first person that people think about when you hear the word AEW. And if you look bad, everyone looks bad. So I am begging Tony to get better at these interviews. Or just don't do them. Have the boss to answer the question and then answer them succinctly and honestly. Or don't answer the question. Because you suck at non-answers. Sorry. I said that as an AEW fan. You suck at non-answers. You're not a Triple H. You're not a Vince McMahon. You're not a Paul Heyman. Or a Stephanie McMahon. Or even a Shane McMahon. If you're not going to answer the question, just, just don't do the interview. You can promote Dynamite on Twitter. And call every, call every Dynamite the best show you've ever had. Because apparently you're just going to be doing that regardless, even if the show is not all that great. Which is what you should be doing. But it gets to a point where people stop believing that the show is going to be great. If, if you don't really do what you have to do to make the shows great. So, I really do hope... That he does get the numbers up because attendances have not been good for AEW. They just haven't. The buzz hasn't been there. 
whether it's a lack of CM Punk or whatever the hell. Fine, you lost CM Punk. Create another CM Punk. Hire another CM Punk. Create someone even bigger than CM Punk. Or bring in someone bigger than CM Punk. Adam Copeland's a start. Who else you got? You got all these other WWE releases. You're going to bring them in? Okay, but are they as big as CM Punk, though? You, you, you have to fill that hole. Somehow, someway. You have to get the buzz going. And you have to be ready. When WWE hits a cold period, because they're about to enter WrestleMania season, they're going to kick your ass during that time. But they're going to enter a cold period. When that cold period happens, are you going to be ready to take up, to take the ball and score a touchdown? Horrible analogy, but I, I don't know what else to say at this point. To take the pole and run. And if you don't think you're good enough, if you're not confident in yourself and you know your booking is lacking, if your creative juices are lacking, hire somebody. You're a billionaire. That's the whole reason we were excited that you came around. Because you're a billionaire. If you're not good at it, you can hire people who are. Get to work. Damn, I'm fired up. Wasn't expecting to come up here all fired up, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm pretty sure I pissed off a lot of people. I apologize ahead of time. I should have apologized, but oh well. Here we are. Like the video, subscribe, and click the bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Do all the YouTube things. Follow me on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Donate, PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, and Venmo. Man, I, I hope Dynamite's good tomorrow. Do not make me go to that show and come up here and rip you a new one like I did in this one. I love you, Tony, and that's why I do it. I do it because I want you to be good. I need you to be good. I'm not doing this so you can fail. I'm ripping you a new one so you can be awesome. And right now, you're meh. Get it together. Just Alex signing out right here in Alex's world. You guys have a good day. Peace. Oh, when you're